Hey everyone, Dr. Chelsea here with Treasure Valley Pelvic Health. If this is your first time joining me, I am a pelvic health expert and energy medicine practitioner. So today I wanted to dive in and go over the five main functions of the pelvic floor so you can gain a better understanding of the full capacity of the pelvic floor and how it can play a role in other things that many people overlook. Some of them you're familiar with and others are less familiar. So let's dive right in. I oftentimes find that it's really helpful to have a visual of the pelvic floor and the organs within that um, and within the pelvis in order to have a better understanding of what is going on and how this all fits together. So I have my model here. This is a female model. Some of my organs aren't stuck together very well with their little magnets here, but you can see how they're oriented. We've got the rectum back here tucked all the way in the back, then we've got the uterus here in front, in the middle here, and then the bladder right up front. You can see if there's any sort of problem with one, how it can really greatly influence the other associated organs. So it's really important to understand because a lot of times people think that, let's say, bladder problems with urgency and frequency, that they may just need to tighten and strengthen the pelvic floor, and that's not always the, the case. So it's important to understand that here, that sometimes if someone is constipated, the pressure from the stool in the rectum can really play into the function and control at the bladder. So important concept there. Now, let me take the organs out so we can get to the pelvic floor, what we're really talking about today. And so here, from looking top down, you can see these nice broad groups of group of muscles, and this is just one facet of the pelvic floor. There are three layers to the pelvic floor. This is the deepest one. This is the one that people tend to feel the most when they're doing Kegels. Superficially, more on the external area, and again, this is a female pelvis, so the superficial role of muscles here is actually two layers of muscles, and so you can see deeper here is the third uh, layer. So it's important to know and understand that it's not just this deep sensation. We actually also want to focus on getting some superficial uh, sensation as well. These superficial muscles go around the clitoris. They create closure here at the opening of the vagina, as well as the anal, the superficial anal control. So important to be able to target all of those areas of the pelvic floor so that you can optimize your function. So like I said, there's five main functions of the pelvic floor. So the first is sphincteric control. This is being able to maintain good closure of the opening of the urethra where we urinate from and the anal sphincter as well as the opening of the vagina. So it's important to be able to isolate those areas so that we don't leak urine, that we can empty efficiently, um, and that we don't have any sort of descent of the pelvic organs or that the pelvic organs don't come out of the opening of the vagina for prolapse. So sphincteric control, number one. Now number two is intercourse. Now sex should not be painful, period. There are many times that a woman may experience some discomfort, especially after having a baby. Those first few attempts of having intercourse can be rather uncomfortable. However, if it's not getting better, if it creates any sort of anxiety or any discomfort that prolongs beyond the activity, you should seek medical help. Talk to your physician or reach out to a pelvic health expert and they can help navigate what exactly may be going on. There's many facets that may be contributing to that symptom. So it's important to have someone who can really navigate the nuances. It's not always just dryness. It doesn't need time. There's so many things that can be done. So reach out for help if you're having any problems with intercourse. Now number three is support. So the pelvic floor here, if you look at it from the side, kind of creates a hammock to the pelvis to help support the pelvic organs in the pelvic bowl itself. And in this way, it can help 
if there is any sort of prolapse that is occurring or when a pelvic organ is descending lower into that vaginal canal, it creates, again, that kind of lift support system so that things don't descend further down into the vaginal canal. Now, that being said, those muscles can also be too tight, so then things don't empty and open efficiently. So the problem of constipation may be something more at the superficial layer, like we talked about sphincteric control, but it can also be a problem a little bit deeper here in the muscles where the rectum goes through the pelvis itself. So that's important to navigate and have someone who can really decipher the root cause of that constipation for you. Number four, stability. When the pelvic floor muscles are strong, then they're going to be really supportive supportive and create a sense of stability in the pelvic girdle. So if you think about when you do a Kegel, the muscles draw in towards the middle and upward. So you're getting this again from this angle in toward the middle and up. Right. I almost liken it to a drawstring laundry bag to create a little bit of closure. So when these muscles are nice and strong and supportive, then it helps pull this whole pelvic girdle, the pelvic ring, together by pulling it from the inside and pulling it nice and snug so it's nice and stable. When that is nice and stable, then it creates less problem around the low back for the spine to function and move upon. The hips can be more stabilized and well supported so that you don't have as many aches and pains. If the pelvic floor is weak, then other adjacent muscles and structures have to take up the slack and help support those areas a little bit more than what they per se should be having to do. And then number five, this one is overlooked. This is what we call sump pump. So think of it as a pumping action. Oftentimes after surgery, you'll hear, um, especially for lower extremity surgeries, people will be asked by their providers to do ankle pumps where they move their foot up and down so the muscle has a pumping action so that blood doesn't become stagnant in the pelvic, or excuse me, in the lower extremity and be a risk factor for DVTs or deep vein thrombosis. And that can be problematic because that's a blood clot and if that gets mobilized and shifts within the system, um, you can have bigger implications, bigger problems happen. So less so for the risk of blood clots here in the pelvis, but when we have that muscle pumping action, it doesn't it minimizes the risk of the blood becoming stagnant and creating varicose veins. Vulvar varicosities are very common during pregnancy and they can be really uncomfortable. Hemorrhoids can be a problem, just a sense of heaviness, and there can be other problems such as pelvic congestion syndrome. So that's another good reason to have, um, to be, to do consistent Kegels, as well as being able to have an orgasm. That action of the muscles contracting with an orgasm can help pull some of that stagnant blood out of the pelvic girdle, out of the pelvic floor, and minimize any sort of discomfort. So there you have it. Those are my five main functions of the pelvic floor. If you're having problems with any of them, reach out to me or reach out to a local provider and make sure you ask questions to get to the root cause of what is going on with you. Have a great one.